The Raspberry Pi Pico came out in January of this year, 2021. Um, because it was from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, I was immediately interested in it, to see what it could do. But it took a while for me to understand what some of the features were, to see some useful example projects come about. One feature that did strike me as pretty interesting is the combination of the fact it was inexpensive at like $6 and it could do uh, HID support, USB HID support. And then I saw an advert for an e-ink display, which was also cheap. It was 2.9 inches um, and it had fast redraw and it's specifically designed to work with the Pi Pico as a backpack. Um, and that seemed like the perfect base for me to make another macro keypad. Um, if you're not familiar with macro pads, they're all the rage right now. I think there's dedicated Pi Pico macro pad kits coming out from Adafruit pretty soon, which would completely supersede what I've done here, but that wasn't the point of this project. I took the plunge, I got hold of a Pico, and I got this uh, e-ink backpack, and with the help of a few getting started guides, I got the demo code on there so that I could it would draw a fractal on the e-ink e screen. Um, it also demonstrated partial refreshes which were quite cool because that was even faster than the full screen refresh. Um, but then I hit a snag. The demo code available for this particular e-ink screen is MicroPython. What I found was the HID support that I was so keen to use is CircuitPython. Now what's the difference? Um, I wasn't hugely familiar with either of these but both MicroPython and CircuitPython are versions of Python that you can run on these small microcontrollers, but they require a different, essentially, kernel slash firmware to be programmed onto the board. So it's a bit of an either-or situation at the minute. You kind of put one kernel slash firmware onto the device and it lets you use MicroPython, so I could draw the screen, or you the microcontroller with a different firmware, which lets you use CircuitPython, which may not have an HID library and HID support. What I did is I went the CircuitPython route because there just seemed to be more useful CircuitPython libraries out there. But that left me with a problem of driving the screen. Uh, I found someone else had ported some e-ink code for a similar screen to CircuitPython, which gave me a starting point. I just had to figure out the specialities of this particular model. Uh, I haven't got all the advanced features working, but I have managed to modify the e-ink driver code to render the pixels without glitching. Um, I spent a long time trying to make a font library work, only to discover that actually wasn't that useful. The harder task is drawing the rest of the screen display using primitives. Uh, it turned out to be easier to make the screens in GIMP as images, export them as bitmaps, and then convert them to the bit format needed for my display, uh, which I was now pretty fluent in. My macro pad has multiple screens. I'm only using two so far, but the plan is to have up to four. Uh, the screen pages cycle when you press the bottom button, which is the most inconvenient to access. Um, the screen refresh that I've ported is a full screen refresh. It's quite slow compared to the partial refresh, so there's some optimization that could be done there. Uh, the other five buttons on my macro pad, uh, they line up with their row of text, so the labels serve as a reminder of what it is you're getting when you press that button. The construction is very simple. Um, I've 3D printed a surround and I've given it sort of mouse-like ergonomics so it fits in your hand. You can rest your hand over the recessed screen and left thumb click the buttons. Uh, I have my right hand on my actual mouse allowing me to change focus. I find that quite an efficient ergonomic for me. The case is printed in Colorfab translucent green PLA and most of the parts screw together although the top shell is a friction fit. Um, it took a lot of revisions to get that fit correct. Um, I really wanted to do a sort of smooth, curved, non-box-like case, which added to the complications. It's, it's a bit boxy, but I do quite like the styling now. Um, in terms of practicality, this has already become an indispensable tool for me. I'll probably build a better one at some point, but I'm using this on a daily basis now. Um, one Pico feature that I hadn't anticipated is that the Pico is already mounted as a USB drive which it took a bit of getting used to. And the great feature of the Python is that I can simply change the, the shortcuts that I use just by editing a text file, essentially. Updating the graphics on my keypad is a bit more involved because of the route that I've gone uh, where I have to make these bitmaps and put new bitmap files on there for it to load. Anyway, thank you for watching and stay safe.